I think to do the work properly, you have to be a little bit obsessive about it to get the really good shots, but it, uh, I've managed to do it. I think shooting, whether it's nude or whether it's not nude, there are challenges because you don't always know what you're going to get. Pictures are more of a way of communication these days. I find that a really good picture also just relays the comfortability between the model and the photographer. I've always been an artist, so the, doing this photography is just a natural step for me. But I, I, I consider myself a filmmaker and a photographer. My style or specialty is shooting miniatures. It's kind of like blocking a shot in film. You know, it, when you see a film being made, that's where the magic happens, is where the shot gets blocked off. And then when you piece it all together, it, it looks like something. If you just showed the set, you wouldn't see it as the camera would see it. So that's kind of the philosophy behind this. If that makes any sense. Oh, great. <laughs> now you're capturing what really happens. There's a lot of challenges to making these miniatures and working with them. One of the main things is the stability of everything. I'll spend like 20 minutes setting up the shot and then it'll tip over. Uh, sometimes it's pretty unstable because of these styrofoam sets that I have. And uh, like this mountain that I have on here right now is quite heavy. So if I'm not careful, it'll tip over and I'll have to start all over again. Well, when I'm making these sets, I try to do as much uh, as uh, possible in camera because I don't like to use Photoshop too much. So the most I'll do in Photoshop is uh, I'll paint out these wires where the clouds are hanging off of. So that would be the most extreme thing that I would do. And um, I, like to, I like to create it for real because I like to make layers um, within the sets. And so that, to me, it provides a lot of depth for the work. The influences behind my work, especially with the lighting, comes a lot from cinematic, uh, cinematic works, say, like the X-Files. I've watched so much of that, and so that, that really seeps into my work. And then the secondary factor is that I wanted to have a painterly look to my work, so I've always been interested and fascinated by painters. So the photography is the medium, but the feeling behind it is, is more of a painterly feel. My first serious bit of photography work was uh, the miniature squash series that I did with soldiers inside squash, which I backlit with like a 200 par HMI and they'd catch on fire and I'd have to put them out. I call that series uh, Organics in Combat and uh, I was just going for an aesthetic idea initially, but then it became sort of a, a metaphor for fighting disease, sort of like that internal organ sort of feel.
My whole miniature exploration with bees started in a bee apiary. I had this fascination with real bees, and my idea was to create a miniature world of bees, so that's how I got into the miniatures. The spiritual side of my work, it, it stems from being with real bees uh, on, on the real bee farms. When I first started going to, to bee farms, I, I got this uh, overwhelming feeling of being like this almost a zen state, you could call it. It's a very calm and relaxing feeling for me to be around bees. One of the things that fascinated me about real bees were these hives that they put the bees in these square white boxes, so I started to research that. When I got into the miniature work, the first thing I started making were miniature hives. And then it just kept evolving from there to landscapes with hives. Then it went into beekeepers, and then it just kept evolving until I eventually developed a narrative. Um, well, this right here is one of the miniature sets that I've made. Um, Basically, this is a reincarnation of many sets that I keep, I rip things out and I put them back in and rip things out, use different scales of hives. These hives are, are newer, they're a little bit smaller, but I've made different, different sizes, like I got this size of hive, and I, and I can't nail it down to an exact scale size, but it's just sort of, I eye it up and I think that's the size I want to use. And then I have this size. So those are three different sizes, but basically I have six or seven different sizes that I use. And I, the reason I use all the different sizes is depending on what lens or what camera I'm using, I want to get different perspectives. So if I want to make it seem far away, I can sort of force that far away perspective and yet not be that far away. I made this bee with, uh, first with clay, and then I made a, a, a mold, and then I casted it with uh, some soft plastics. So this is actually quite soft. I actually just uh, molded just the body of the bee, and then I added the wings and the legs afterwards. I want to show people my original ideas, and I want to express them in like an impressionistic sort of way. So if they get that feeling from it, then that's satisfying to me. The response to this miniature bee work has been pretty good overall. I won American Photo of the Year, and uh, so that kind of put me on the map with uh, the photographic community. And uh, I think that people are taking this miniature bee work seriously. I've had a lot of articles written on it, and. Uh, Serious art collectors are buying the work, so I think that it's making a bit of an impact on people. And I think that the work is, is original. Like, I try to always strive to be as original as possible, like true to myself. So that's what I want to represent. I know that people respond very well to my work. It's layered and it's deep and they appreciate that. I definitely have a style uh, and, and sensibility. Uh, I have found that people can see my work and they will know that I, that I did it. They'll say, oh, that's, that's Elizabeth's work, I can tell. And um, they like the aesthetic of it and the sensibility of it. Right now what I'm doing is uh, taking self-portraits for a call for submissions for an, an exhibition by the name of The Invisible Age. It's uh, an exhibition that's uh, being uh, curated by two uh, women from uh, California and their uh, theory is that there is an invisible age between age 50 and 65, an age in which women become 
virtually invisible. I've decided to photograph my neck because the neck is the first um, place where signs of aging start to show and also um, the neck in terms of uh, the voice, the chakra, the, the throat, the neck, losing your voice, losing your, your, um, your communication with the rest of the world. So there are all of these things that are intertwined while I'm doing this. Self-portraiture has been um, my primary subject for a, about 20 years. I think shooting, whether it's nude or whether it's not nude, there are challenges because you don't always know what you're going to get. And I think that for me is an element of, of a part of the reason that I enjoy it because there is surprise, but if you approach it with uh, meaning and uh, if, if you're working on a body of work and you want to communicate a certain emotion you can get yourself it's acting it's performance art really that's what it is and it's therapy too using film is what I do I have a digital camera and I still do not take it seriously for some reason. I just can't do my serious work with digital. I do use film and will use film as long as it's available. And it is getting very scarce. It's getting hard to find. The camera that I'm using is two and a quarter. It's medium format. It's a Yashica Mat, which is a very old camera, twin lens reflex which I have used for many, many years for my self-portraits. I do have a Hasselblad, but I do prefer the Yashica mat. And um, it's an old friend. Each body of work is begun in a, a various way. For example, one body of work is called uh, Lifelines, and that was created, I had photographed my hand holding a, uh, a piece of coral on the beach. And when I developed it and looked at it, I looked at my hands and this piece of coral and I thought, my hands are aging and are very much like this piece of coral, the lines and everything in it. And so then I started to think about all the lifelines in, in the world and the environment around us. So that was the impetus for that body of work, Lifelines. An Hour of the Wolf is a, a body of work about nightmares. And that's a combination of self-portraits and other images in sequence to create small, short narratives. And that is primarily how I work. Extinct is a body of work um, about an animal rights organization. And I was trying to create a visceral connection between um, those people and the environment. So I photographed them nude in the environment to create that feeling. Termina is uh, about the dwindling family tree, uh, specifically my branch. Uh, my great-grandmother had six kids, my grandmother had three, my mother had two, and I have none. So uh, under these grids in the column of self-portraits, there will be a family tree, which will just, it will show it dwindling to nothing, and then there'll just be a line. And uh, so I think it's, it's quite poignant and it's making me feel much closer to uh, my ancestors. One of the works that I'm particularly proud of is called Filigree. And that's a photograph of my hands holding a um, dragonfly. And the dragonfly was actually alive when I, when I photographed it. It was, it, was, it was dying, but it was alive when I photographed it. And I, I always feel that I made it uh, immortal by photographing it there. And, and it's, it's been a very popular image as well. People have responded well to it, as in collections and museums.
photography is my passion. There's always a sense of exploration. There's always a sense of something new and something exciting, something that you didn't count on. You're really just uh, discovering something every day. Everything you photograph, you discover it. You look at it, you photograph it. You're discovering it while you're, you're photographing it. You look at it in your film and in your print, and you discover something else about it even then. And uh, it just continues. I know that people respond very well to my work. I've had people come to my shows, they'll look at the work, they'll love it, they'll go away and then five years later they'll call me and they'll say, you know that image that was in that show, I just cannot get it out of my mind, it's just haunted me for all of these years, I have to have it. And so that to me is really fulfilling. I think that that's, that's really wonderful when that, when that happens because they, they get it and it's layered and it's deep and they appreciate that. People even ask me, you know, how do you do Photoshop to make them look like mannequins? And I tell them they're just real mannequins. At gallery showings, they ask me, well, where are the models? And I'm like, in the store windows. I think the type of photographer I am is a people photographer. I like to capture people in the mood they're in. I also like to bring something out of them. Some may have a history of modeling, some may not. Some will just have this look about them that I really feel I can turn them into something. That's good. Oh, that's good. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. Um, we'll pin it during because I'm going to have you like sort of laughing and pulling it down and really just like it's all going to be about big smiles and pouty faces. Okay. So it'll be a strip of like five or six faces and okay. very animated is animated is the word. I really like to take people into different surroundings that they wouldn't regularly be in and just push them to see how far they can go. Today we're going to be taking some pictures of a model friend of mine, Kellett. She's going to be a prom queen. We're going to be doing her makeup all crazy, her hair all crazy, and just put her in a dress and see what happens. It's a collective of everyone's gathering together to produce something that's really going to push people to look. He's writing at legs and looking straight up there. Perfect. And bigger eyes, not... There you go, very nice. So you're going to have the feel that you're actually like a crazy, you're kind of crazy at the prom. Your date stood you up, you're not going to be able to have such a good night. So I'm going to get you interacting with your hair even a little bit. So if I can get you just to put your hand sort of in your hair. Very nice. The makeup looks great, Mel. And looking right, perfect. Okay. Most of the looks that I do in the images are all taken from, I guess, the creative process of working with people. Most of the models that I shoot um, have no experience. Some I'll walk down the street and I'll find someone, I'll see them and I'll see their look and I'll see something about them that's so unique. I'll really just bring them in, stand them in front of a, a backdrop and I'll tell them to jump. I'll tell them to laugh, I'll tell them to scream, I'll tell them to stand on their head. It really just loosens them up and I don't want them to think this is a time of pressure. It's mostly just to have fun and see what comes out of it. I usually bring someone in for 30, 40 minutes, we sit down, we talk, we look through magazines, I ask them what their interests are and then we start playing around and fooling around and just making it interesting. <laughs> I don't like to use a lot of lights. I like to just, you know, use one light, make it very even light, just have it textured. If I want to drag a shadow on the nose, I'll move it over a little bit. But I like my lights to be very movable. So I have a battery pack that I plug my stuff into and I can move the stand anywhere I need it. So the lighting we use, Kelleth, won't be too bright on your eyes. It's going to be uh, pretty even as well. I'll have it from the top. So it'll just blank you. Oh, that looks fantastic. The camera really, to me, just gives me the sense of being able to freeze a moment. Perfect. Now, if you could pull the dress up, let me see the crinoline part. 
Very nice. So, a little bit more attitude, perfect. My style is colorful, but very contrasty, but I want them to look like they look. And I feel that with my work, it's mostly mood. The work that I've been doing with the dolls really opens up a lot of doors for people. A lot of people have come to me and said, I want to be a creepy doll. I want to be a fun doll. I want to be someone that really just exudes a creepiness about them or a really porcelain look. Um, with the team of hair and makeup that I have, we've turned some people into some amazing things. This doll here, Ashley, she was the very first one that really opened the doors and really was the first shoot that me and my girlfriend did that set us on the way of what we want to do as a whole. Mannequins came out of me being at a fashion shoot and using mannequins just to test the lighting. And then I laid one down on a sheet, started shooting it in different angles, and I looked at it and I said, that's my next business card. And that inspired me to shoot other mannequins and just show people that even though it's a still being, it has so much emotion and it's going to have so much power within it. You know, you, we walk by them every single day and they see so much that I just want to sort of give back to them in a way. One particular shot that I'm very fond of that sort of makes me feel that represents me the best is a shot of an abandoned house. Um, the grass is really green, there's lots of texture on the house, the roof is really nice and red. Um, I also have one called Waiting in Vain where it's a girl on a train track with a red suitcase and she's holding it. It's actually my girlfriend, it was at the end of a day and we shot it. And it, it makes people look, it's, it's been printed and published and it's, it's one of those things that really represents who I am. Today's theme is going to be more about hats. That's why I asked you guys to bring your hats here and just have some fun. Kind of playing with your hats, playing with each other, just looking at each other and working off of each other. Big laughter. Okay, so your hats are perfect, jackets are perfect, the buttons are amazing. Um, I would consider myself an artist first and foremost, and then a photographer second. Um, I really think that my art background and painting abstract art, where it sort of all began, really opened my eyes to working with color, working with texture, working with people, and just being able to frame the shots, make sure that somebody going and looking at the shots is actually looking and feeling what I felt when I took the shot. That's awesome. You guys are great. Thank you so much.